Hey, stats class, I'm going to give you a, an example, uh, or a visualization, I should say, of the, um, of the distribution of sample means. And what, what, is that, what does that mean? What does that phrase mean? So what we got here, to start off as a bell curve, I am uh, just making up this, this data set completely, but I, I said, like, hypothetically, this would be um, possibly a, a population of all the students that attend some state university. This is their age. And the, the peak just kind of shows where the ages are distributed mostly. So we can see the ages are in the early 20s, uh, a few late teens, um, a few, you know, kind of making our way to the mid-20s, not quite there. But anyway, that's where it peaks. And the mean, you can see over here with our, our distribution, is 21.2 years uh, old is what that uh, vertical line means. Remember, a, a bell curve is always symmetric at its mean. Now, you see this A and this MA, all this stuff down here. Um, what the A, the capital letters are, they, they are random samples. So this is a, a way to get Desmos to give you a random sample from a normal distribution. I know it looks crazy. You don't have to worry about needing to do this. Uh, it's just for this, this visualization, this illustration. But these are random samples of size 30 from something that's distributed in this manner. So the the, uh, the peak being, you know, between 20 and 22 and a half kind of implies that uh, that's where we're going to see most of the values from a random sample. But because it's random, we could get values way down here. You know, it's possible we could get values way up here. It's possible. But again, it's just like a histogram. The, the heights are a measure of how likely it is to see values in there. And so it's much more likely to see values in this range than it is on values in the tail. So I'm going to click this first uh, box right here, and it's going to give some points. And these, again, are just points chosen at random. It's the 30 elements in this list right here. Uh, and so there's the 30 numbers. And so they range from 19.7 to 22.35. But again, like you see, they're clustering around uh, the peak, you know, where the peak is. We're seeing that those values more abundant than the values on the edges and the outside. All right, now this next dot, it's, it's much bigger than the others uh, because I want to emphasize it. This is the average of those 30 numbers, okay? So down here below all the samples, I do the means of those things. So this is the sample mean there. So 21.1 is the sample mean. And you can see right beside it again, the population mean is 21.2. So the sample mean, it didn't hit it exactly, but it was close. All right, now right below that, I'm going to add, I'm going to turn off A, and I'm going to add capital B. All right, and we can see it's a different data set. Uh, the, the values are different. It's, it's a random sample. So the values that we see in the random sample are different than the values we got in the other random sample. Okay should be expected that we're not going to get the same values from one random sample to the next. All right, and because of that, we're not going to get the same mean as we get from one sample to the next. So the mean of the sample is that second blue dot, and we can see we got a different mean, and it's a little bit further away than the original mean. All right, I'm going to turn off B, and then there is C, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find the mean of these. So there is the mean of the third sample, right there, very close to the mean. Uh, the overall mean, 21.18 and 21.2. So it's right there beside the overall mean. So this is a random sample, and the mean of the random sample, and I'm just keeping all of the, um, the sample means on there, because again, this is the distribution of sample means. I want you to see that sample means have a distribution, that they're random, just like we randomly pick these values, and we get numbers way far away from the middle. You know, occasionally, not often. And again, clustering at the, the, the numbers we get are random. So the mean of those numbers is random. So it also has a distribution. You know, it, it falls in different places. Now I want to cut to the chase. I mean, turn off these. So just remember the means were blue dots. And if we scroll down past all these means that I've calculated, I've got them listed together uh, as points on the x-axis, so the y-coordinates are always zero. And these are those same blue dots. It's just I have all of them uh, plotted at once. So you can see some of these are values are bigger than 20.2, uh, 
like 20.3, 20.26. Some of them are less than 20.2, 21.01. So we're getting a, a scattering, a random dis distribution of averages of 30 values at, at a time. So what we're seeing here is the distribution of sample means, random means plotted on the number line rather than random values. Now, one thing that I want you to see from this week's PowerPoints is this particular slide and, and a one a couple slides away. Uh, it says the mean of the sample means, the mean of the sample means, which is this notation right here. Notice it's got population mean but it also has sample mean. So the mean of the sample means is the mean of the population. What does that mean with our picture or our uh, Desmos plot right here? So remember, these are the uh, random samples, these capital letters. These are the means of those capital letters. And I have plotted them in this table, the means and zeros, so they'll be on the x-axis. And then down here at the bottom, I've calculated the mean of the sample means. And what I want you to see is, there it is. The mean of the sample means is 21.18, which rounds at the tenths place to 21.2. The mean of the sample means is equal to the mean of the population. That's what we're seeing here. The important thing is, it's not exactly equal, but... This also, remember, that, that means population mean. That means the mean of all, every possible sample mean. And this is not every possible sample mean. This is, you know, I've got like 15. And so there's hundreds of thousands, millions, uh, quadrillions, billions of samples of size 30 taken from the population of a, a state uh, university. You know, there's thousands of students that go to that school one of I take 30 at a time we're talking about uh, some unfathomable large number of of uh, different samples that I could get and I'm, I'm taking 15 of them so this isn't the mean of all of them it's just to give you a visual if I average the sample means I get a mean of sample means so this is just to show you that these because they're kind of scattered about well they're they're scattered about the population mean and they're averaged, just like the average when I do a, a random sample. And the mean of that random sample is, you know, in the middle of the, uh, the data set. The same thing's happening here. The mean of the sample means is kind of in the middle. And it's because they're scattered about the population mean, the mean of the sample means does end up being the uh, population mean. All right, and then on that slide, or on that uh, PowerPoint, if you go a couple more down, we get this, the standard deviation of the sample means, right? The standard deviation of sample means, which again is that symbol, standard deviation, and then X bar, sample mean, is the standard deviation of the population, but it's not just it. It's divided by the square root of our sample size, right? So divided by the square root of the sample size. So in our picture, it's divided by the square root of our sample size, which was 30. These were all samples of size 30. So if you scroll down here, I've got the mean of the population, all right? That's that's the mean of the sample means as well. And then the square root of 30 down there in the denominator, the original standard deviation, the original standard deviation was 0 0.8 in my hypothetical scenario. This is 0 0.8 divided by the square root of 30. So just so you can see it, I check that box. You can see this is a much tighter everything's kind of squeezed in you guys made the observation that um, bell curves if they have the same mean they're going to be centered at the same place but if they have a smaller standard deviation they're a lot taller and skinnier all right i'm going to raise this up a little higher i think i can go to three yeah. and uh see the peak so this thing peaks much higher than the other one because it's a tighter bell curve it has a much smaller standard deviation but the mean of the um, sample means, which is, again, the, the purple curve is the sample means, is the mean of the original population. So there I've uh, extended this, the mean just to show you. It goes all the way up, and it's the mean of this one, too. It's symmetric in the distribution of sample means, and it's symmetric in the original 
distribution. Okay, so that's part of the central limit theorem. Part of it says if we start with a bell curve, we're going to keep a bell curve no matter the sample size. You know, 30 was our sample size here, but um, uh, we end up with a, a bell curve also. It's just a much tighter bell curve because for each of the values, the random samples that we get from the red curve, we get one value out of the blue curve and that uh, purple curve. And that curve or that, that value is just by nature because it's a random sample of 30 and we're finding it's mean it goes towards the middle so it, it doesn't live out in the tails as, as much as as values could have and you know we we saw with some of those samples some of the values were way out in the tail uh, but because we're getting a mean of those 30 values it you know it doesn't matter that we got a value out in the tail on, on either side when we average them, we, we target the middle. And so from all these values, we get one number, and that number is going to be way more likely to be in the middle of the red curve than uh, anywhere near the tails. And so just by the nature of averaging, we, we pull in towards the middle, and that's why our distribution has this shape that it does. So this is what we mean by the distribution of sample means. We're now looking at the purple curve, and instead of random values from the data set, random sample means of a certain size, sample size, from the data set.